The scripture today is from John 11, pages 104 and 105 in your pew Bible. Hear the word of the Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Mary and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. There's a cave. It's a tomb. And there's a stone that must be rolled away. 
And there are strips of cloth, cloths for burial. There's weeping and there's death. Jesus had come to Bethany. Lazarus was dead. If you had been here, Martha said, if only you had been here. Her understanding of Jesus was such that from the very core of her being, she trusted that had he been there, her brother would not have died. Even then, she trusted Jesus could do something, though she had no real notion of what shape that something might take. Nonetheless, her confidence in the man Nazareth was sure. But even now, she said, I know, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. And she took that as a reminder that on the last day, her brother, along with all who believe, will be raised. It was a teaching of the Pharisees, one to which she adhered. Martha heard that reminder and accepted its words of comfort. This death, painful as it was, had a time limit, as will her own. She reassured Jesus of her belief and the comfort that it afforded her. She said, I know, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus had not meant the resurrection on the last day. He intended by his words something much more in the present, something life-giving, something death reversing. He intended something that would not be constrained to wait and until an undisclosed future date until the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone who believes in me will never die. And then he asked the question, the question that is our question today. He asked, do you believe this? Do you believe this? I am the resurrection and the life. So much contained in so few words. I, the one you call Jesus, and that for which you wait and hope. I, the one sent from above, the one sent from God. I am the resurrection and the life. From the eternal one I come, from the creator, from the life giver I come. Those who believe in me will live, not only in this physical life, but in an eternal life as well. And the scripture is clear, that eternal life begins not at the tomb, not at some end of time, but Jesus is clear that it begins with him right here, right now. Even as we speak, Martha, even as we speak, he says to her, do you believe this? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. There's a cave. It is a tomb. There is a stone. It must be rolled away and strips of cloth, cloths for burial, there is weeping, and there's death. And death, of course, comes in many forms. We recognize it best when it takes physical shape, robbing us of our loved ones and our, and our own selves through the mortality of our own bodies. And this death brooks no ultimate denial. The person we knew, with whom we ate and drank, laughed and argued, played and worked is gone from this world in which we live and breathe and have our being. This kind of death we know. This kind of death we recognize and mourn and celebrate into eternal life beyond the grave. But then again, there are deaths not so recognizable such as, such as the death of dreams or the death of hopes or the death of plans, or the death of careers, or abilities, or options. And there's the death of relationships, of identity, of esteem, and the death even of one's own inner self. And those kinds of deaths, though tormenting and anguishing, often go unmourned and uncelebrated, for they are to us without any promise of life beyond the wayside graves 
into which they fall. And we, like Martha, we know only that something dear to us is no more. That we are empty where we were once filled. That there is a barrenness where there was to be a rich sweetness. And we, like Martha, hope that something, someday, will bring life again out of the barren emptiness that we feel. And into that emptiness, into the barrenness of our present, steps Jesus. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am that for which you wait and hope. I, the one sent from above, the one sent from God, I am the resurrection and the life. From the eternal one I come, from the creator, from the life giver I come. Those who believe in me will live not only a physical life, but will have an eternal home. And not at the end of time, but with me. Right here, right now. Even as we speak, Jesus says to Martha, even as we speak. And he asks the question again of her and us. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? It is God's offer of resurrection, the opportunity to pass from death to life. In Jesus Christ, God sent the offer not of some old life gained again, but of a life restored on new terms after its loss. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. There is a cave. It is a tomb. There is a stone. It must be rolled away in strips of cloth, cloth for burial. There is weeping. There is death. Oh, but there is about to be life. Jesus says, take away the stone. And Martha, ever the pragmatist, says to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. And Jesus says to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the very glory of God? Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the very presence of God in your midst? Did I not tell you that the life-giving God is here right now before you in the person of the one, the Son, who was sent? And Jesus says, take away the stone. So they took away the stone. And Jesus, as the stone is being removed, looks upward and says, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew, I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. I'm no magician. I have no magical powers. I speak to you aloud, my Father, so that everything I do will be understood as coming from you. And so that these people will believe that you, their God, have sent me. And then, after he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out. His hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said, unbind him, let him free. Seems so simple. Take away the stone. Just, just take away the stone. But it's not so simple for us to roll away the stone that might be in front of the tombs of our lives. We look about at our private cemeteries remarking on the growing number of losses. Losses of all kinds in our lives. And we know in our own souls that were it not for our trust in God, our very lives would be cemeteries. Apart from our trust in God, 
The world becomes a cemetery, roamed by people who are devoid of hope, devoid of life-giving resources, a cemetery filled with the tomb of dead lives, dead dreams, dead hopes, dead selves, all sealed with great stones, with only the promise of decay and lifelessness behind those stones. So much death. And I wonder, whatever happened, whatever happened to schools and churches as safe zones, places known by all as off limits for incredibly sickening behavior? Whatever happened to being able to trust our leadership to tell the truth? How do we deal with so many diseases which kill our loved ones far too early? And whatever happened to the Gators and Florida and Ohio State last night? <laughs> so much death. <laughs> It was getting a little heavy. I thought you needed that. <laughs> but into the world, God has sent Jesus Christ with the offer of resurrection, with the offer of the opportunity to pass from death to life. And into our individual lives, God has sent in Jesus Christ the offer of resurrection, the opportunity for us to pass from death to life. Do you believe this, he asked. And when he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. I am the resurrection and the life, he says. Do you believe this? And he asked each one of us that as, as we stand outside the tombs that dot our lives. And then he cries out for that for which we mourn. Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. And that for which we mourn comes forth, not as it was before, but restored on new terms, transformed after the loss. The opportunity to pass from death to life comes to us once again. And the good news of Jesus Christ is this, that that opportunity comes over and over and over again. We can receive new life through Jesus Christ. Whatever might be the death in our life, Jesus offers us new life. It's offered by God and Jesus. There is a cave. It is a tomb. There is a stone, and it must be rolled away in strips of cloth, cloth for burial. There is weeping. There is death. But, oh, there is about to be life. And yet there's something else happening here in this passage. What else is happening here? What else is there for us to see? For see we must, as Jesus himself saw Jesus, you remember in this passage, was troubled and weeping. You see, he's in Bethany, not far from Jerusalem, there at a tomb. The tomb was a cave with a large stone covering the opening. The stone is rolled away. Jesus cried with a loud voice. There were grave cloths. Any of this sound familiar? This is not only Bethany, it was Calvary. The Son of God looked upon the tomb of Lazarus and sees another tomb coming. He called forth his friend from death and knew that one cannot give life unless one died. He said it himself, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. As surely as Lazarus left the tomb, 
Jesus must enter it. What else was happening here? What was really happening here? Was Jesus performing the very act that would bring about his own death. And so here we stand on this fifth Sunday of Lent, one foot in Bethany and one foot in Calvary. Here we stand knowing the unknowable, that for Lazarus' fate to be changed, Jesus' fate must be sealed. So here we stand thinking and realizing the unthinkable, that having come from God, this Jesus must return to God, and the way of return is death. Death before any of his friends and relatives can, can even prepare to let him go, before anyone can grasp the, the dangerous reality of the situation, before anyone can realize there's nothing that they can do to stop it. So here we stand, believing the unbelievable, that before us is one who is the resurrection and the life. In his living presence, eternal life begins not at the cave, not at the funeral home, not with the end of time, but with him right now, even as we speak. With him, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I am the resurrection and the life, he said. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet will they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, we believe. And we stand here on this Sunday in Lent, Believing the unbelievable, or at least wanting to believe, longing to believe, needing to be able to believe that in you, the Christ, there is life on both sides of the grave and that the resurrection life is ours to be had right now. Right now and forevermore. Amen.